Good evening, everyone. We are back in the Piedmont. To start off this episode, I'm going to do a quick yard flip, and really, I want to find that king snake that we lost a couple episodes back. So I'm going to hit that piece, and I'm going to flip a lot of other stuff too. But the main goal today is to hope that that king snake comes back out and we can actually catch it. I've checked a couple times, and he has not been there. But it has been pretty hot since that first day we saw him, and it's a little bit cooler today, so hopefully he will be out. Oh, Copperhead. Very nice. Ha <laughs> ha! That is awesome. I wonder if that's the same one we saw in the stack in the fall. I do not know. I'm going to take a quick picture and we'll uh, compare the markings and see. Look at that little beauty. We did see a Copperhead in the stack back in, I think it was November. It was in the late fall. It was one of the last snakes we flipped uh, before winter came. And uh, it's possible this is the same snake but I think this one's a little bit prettier. I'll compare markings. This guy's got a pretty distinct pattern there on the back of his head that should be easy to recognize. Either way, really cool to see a copperhead here at the house. We do not see a lot of these here, and this is the first snake of the day, too. So, really nice. I'm gonna move this guy out of the way and flip this next piece of 10, and then we will get a better look at him. This guy also has something going on with his right eye. I can't tell if he's just got a spider web on it or what, but overall, he's not the healthiest looking copperhead. He's a little bit on the thin side. But as you can hear, there's lots of cricket frogs over there. There's no real shortage of food. So hopefully he'll be able to get a meal here soon. He's in a good spot for it, I think. So we're just gonna let him go back into the tin and see what else we can turn up. First snake of the day, a nice juvenile copperhead here in my backyard. Get out of there. Get out of there. Go. <laughs> Silly wolf spider. Nobody. It's a nice race runner. There we go. Got that one. Look at that. That's one of the more uncommon lizards we have. I'd say that's definitely the most uncommon species that I know I have in the yard. It's definitely possible we have glass lizards, but I haven't found one yet. So whiptails are very fast, obviously. Uh, you saw the first one get away, but uh, you can gently restrain them by the arm or the back leg even better, and uh, that'll prevent them from running away. And you can see the lizard nicely, and it doesn't hurt them. But this guy's got some really nice blue color on him. I think this is a young male. That other one looked like a female. They're probably breeding and getting ready to lay their eggs right now. So I'm just going to put this guy right back and uh, let him carry on with his day. It's getting a little bit late in the afternoon for these guys to be active. So they hunker down under rocks and sleep. All right, we're coming at this from a different angle today. See if we can see that snake basking anywhere. I don't see anything. God, he's still there. I lost him again. Ah, this is frustrating. <laughs> All right, well, the snake hasn't shed yet, and I'm fairly confident that as long as that snake is in shed, it will stay under that rock. I'd say we have probably another week or so to catch that snake before he moves on. What I'm gathering from this flipping session so far is that we need some rain. The soil's very dry under everything. Like that. Look at all those burrows though. This piece is looking amazing. There's a spotted salamander. Look at that guy. Well, it's late April at this point and this guy is hanging out. It's a pretty late season spotted salamander. I've definitely seen them later, but these guys just become less and less common with each passing week as we start moving into late spring. Oh, there's that girl again, under a different piece. That's pretty cool. I was not expecting that. I thought maybe we'd see her in the same spot again, but see her under a different piece is even better. She's moving around and hanging out. 
Very, very cool. I'm just gonna get a quick cell phone photo and then we're gonna leave her alone. She actually looks like she's sleeping right now. <laughs> we're just gonna gently lower that back. There's a red-bellied snake under this rock. I wonder, I know we did see a red-bellied snake under this rock earlier this year. This one seems a little prettier and a little smaller than the other one we saw in here, but it could be the same snake, I'm not sure. Either way, really pretty little red-bellied snake is our next find. I think we've only got a couple of things left to flip at this point, so we'll let her go. We have a different method of herping we are experimenting with today. Electric skateboarding on these paved paths. And uh, I'm gonna skate down to some of my cover. We're gonna flip and uh, just drive around and see if there's anything crossing today. So I've been wanting to get one of these boards for a while now, and Caitlin got me one for Christmas. And it's just now getting warm enough that I feel like it's actually worthwhile to try to actually skate and herp at the same time, because stuff is gonna be moving across these paths. I'm really hoping to put this to use at night out here when the mud snakes are most active, but for now, we're just gonna give it a test run and see what we can turn up. So this thing can go like 30 miles per hour and just within 10 minutes of riding it, I'm in habitat that I've never checked before. This stuff looks kind of gross, but you can imagine how good night cruising this could potentially be. And hopefully we're gonna find out this year. I walk these paths at night pretty often and even walking I see a decent amount of snakes and I see a ton of dead snakes. So I think this is gonna end up being a really productive way to herp and I'm looking forward to doing it a lot more over the course of the spring. Might even mount up the GoPro just in case I can get some live footage of me cruising stuff. Uh, that used to be a brown snake. Will we ever find a live snake or just DORs? Only time will tell. I'm multitasking out here. Squirrels, look at them all. They're everywhere. <laughs> Man, there's still a spotted salamander under here. I was expecting them to be gone with how dry it is, but nope, they're just hanging. There's a brown snake. We're on the board at least. So in addition to that brown snake, there's a shed right there that doesn't really look like a brown snake to me. Yeah, here buddy. Yeah, I got a voucher. Uh, it does look killed, actually. It's probably another brown snake. All right, let's flip this one. And nobody at the bottom. Well, our flips produced one brown snake and I think the same spotted salamander that's been hanging out, but we've seen four DOR snakes on the path so far. Only one of them is fresh and two of them are really, really old brown snakes. But still, I mean, this is panning out a little bit better than I was expecting it to already. And this is kind of just the trial run, so. There's a big Nerodia. It is in fact a brown. Very deep in the shed. Look at that. Not a terribly common species around here. They're definitely the least common of the Nerodia that we get in North Georgia, I think. As you can see, he's got that blocky anaconda looking head. And then very square blotches on the sides there. All right, guys, I came over by the creek real quick to see if I could see any snakes or turtles out basking. We saw that uh, brown water snake, and then I spotted this little guy. This is a spiny softshell turtle, a juvenile. These are one of the most interesting turtles that we have here in the US. They're super cool and super unique. 
Although there are soft shells found worldwide. This has been a very common convergent evolution body type. But from what I understand, it's evolved separately many times across the globe, which is really cool. But look at those back claws on this guy. Super awesome turtles. And they are very soft to the touch. They're almost, they're a little bit flimsy when you touch their shell. But this guy's probably a year or two old. They get a lot bigger than this. They're actually one of the biggest turtles we have around and they have a lot of babies. So we probably see more baby soft shells than we do adults. And adults are a lot harder to catch too because they're big and smart and live in deep water. But yeah, really cool little turtle. The only turtle I've seen so far today. So it might end up being the only turtle of the day unless we can find something else. But either way, really, really cool. I love seeing these guys. And it's an even better day when I can actually catch one because they are very fast in the water. What is this worm doing? Dude, do you not see your dead brethren? It hasn't rained in like six weeks and you're out here crawling across this dry road. Oh, now you're flopping. All right, dude, come on, come on, come on. Look. You're a worm, bro. I didn't have to stop and help you, but I did. Ta-da! Man. All right, guys, it's like three o'clock on a Friday, so a lot of people are out here right now. So I'm gonna try to go to one of the more remote areas and try to cruise a little bit over there and see if we can turn up the live snake. I am on my last GoPro battery though, so it's possible that it's going to die and I will not be able to capture it live. I need to buy some more backups. Ooh, what's this? It's a live ring necked! We did it! We cruised a live snake! <laughs> awesome! Finally! It took all day, but we did it! Well, I feel pretty good about that. It's only a ring neck and it took all day, but we did finally cruise a live snake. Today is not the best day to be doing this, I don't think. Um, I, I definitely think doing it at night is gonna be more productive. And I also think that doing it potentially even during the fall is a better time. But either way, we cruised the snake. It works. The first try actually produced the snake and I'm excited about that. My remote's almost dead, which is crazy that my actual skateboard has outlived the remote and my GoPro today. All right, let's move this guy. We got a bike coming. Guy. Yep. Look at that belly. That is awesome. But yeah, it worked. Our first snake that we actually cruised on a skateboard. <laughs> a very nice ring neck. Big one. Fairly large for this area, especially. I see a lot of little ones here. And he has a really, really dark belly. Maybe even one of the darkest ring neck bellies I've ever seen. Really cool looking. All right, little guy. As excited as I am to see you, you are a ring neck, so <laughs> we can't sit here all day looking at you. Be safe. Don't cross the cart path too often. Go on. <laughs> all right. Let's see if we can find anything else before my batteries die. Now that I actually think about it, it looks like we do have some cloud cover moving in and the conditions for snake movement might be getting better here. So hopefully this next hour or so, I'm assuming that's about how long I have on my batteries, will be productive. But let's find out. So this awesome thing happened where that, uh, that little bar on the right is my battery for the remote. <laughs> and the remote died while I was sitting here looking at the ring neck. So I guess I am done for the day. I do have to walk back to the car, so if I see anything, I will let you guys know. That's definitely a minus points for Skatebolt brand. This thing reportedly still had at least two uh, bars, two little ticks of battery left. And I stopped to look at that ring neck and now it has none, so. I turned it off and back on and then waited a second and uh, back up to two ticks, so. I'm gonna have to make sure I keep this remote charged. Another note, this is definitely not a high-end electric skateboard. We wanted to get a relatively inexpensive one first to see if uh, it actually works for what I wanted to use it for. And sure enough, we found out today that it does. So if this ends up being a kind of bunk brand, then I will just replace it with a better one in the future. 
Oh yeah, and the whole reason I came out here today to this area is because my dad got some boards at work and uh, I needed to pick them up. So we got a lot of nice boards today on top of road cruising a snake on a skateboard. I'm also really dumb. I got back to the car and plugged this in. Turns out that's the board power and this is the remote power. So I don't really know what was going on with the board's battery because it was all over the place. All right, guys. Well, I definitely think that the uh, electric skateboard is going to be an interesting tool going forwards. Uh, there's lots of places in the metro Atlanta area and really anywhere that have these paved paths that you can cruise, quote unquote, on a skateboard or electric bike or just regular bike or whatever you see fit. So I'm definitely going to be trying to make use of these uh, this infrastructure uh, going forwards. Don't know how productive it'll be, but it was fun to get out and try the board. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I'm looking forward to putting it to use in the future. But I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.